Hey, what's up guys? I'm here with my zombie and demon friends in the garage, and today we are going to be building some very large columns. These are replacing the columns I built almost six years ago, and will basically set the stage for the rest of the haunt as people are going to be entering through them this time. I'm only gonna be focusing on the driveway portion of the build in this video because it's part of a very ambitious project of replacing the entire front of the cemetery. So yeah, let's get started. So these are the two foot by two foot miter cut sections for the base of the column. They're made using two by sixes and are screwed in from both the sides and the top using a one by three acting as a bracket. So next I cut the one by fours for the sides. These are 21 inches in height. That makes it basically a two foot cube. Um, and I also cut the diagonal braces for the sides so that it doesn't move back and forth. Um, that makes it a little more stable. And then on the side that you want the gate, I went ahead and added another one by four. Uh, that way I have something to mount the gate to, and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that later. I went ahead and skinned the base with quarter inch plywood. And then for the front and back sides, I made it so that it overlaps the width of the plywood. Um, that way you get a nice 90 degree angle um, for the corners. And I also cut a hole in the back. Um, that way I'll have a trap door that I can get into and attach the bolts um, from each column. You can see the door right there. Uh, but yeah, that's the next thing. This is the middle section of the column. And like I did with the base, I used two by sixes for the bottom part so that each section will be able to bolt into one another. This base is 18 by 18 inches. This vertical one by four is 57 inches in height. Up here, this one is 16 and 5 eighths inches. And this one is 16 and 3 quarters. That makes the top and the bottom the same width. This column will eventually be five feet in height, um, but the plywood is gonna overlap a little so that the lantern section, the top portion of the column, will be able to sit into it. So there are a few braces that you need to add for the middle section. This one is just for stability, so it doesn't really matter where you put it. This one right here is on the left side of the column. This is the front, so this is on the left. This is where the gate will be attached to. So whatever side you put the brace in the base, brace in the base, for the um, gate, that needs to be the same side for the, for the top part of the column. This section is uh, up 36 and a quarter inches. And then the last thing that you need to add is this brace in the back. And this is for the trap door for this section of the column. And this is up 24 and a quarter inches um, from the bottom. And that way the hinges can attach to it. And I'll show you that in a bit. Next, I skinned this portion of the column with a quarter inch plywood. And I made sure to have each corner overlap so that it creates a nice 90 degree angle there. Um, but in order to get the most out of the 4x8 sheets of plywood, I had to make these sections 4 foot tall, which leaves this gap at the bottom. Um, but not to worry, because the foam will eventually cover it up like that, and a good thing about the foam is that it acts as an amplifier. So if you wanted to put speakers down there, uh, you still would be able to hear it through the column. This section is 11 and 3 quarters inch from the bottom of the column up to this part of the plywood. Um, and that leaves up here this overlap for the top section of the column to be one and a half inches tall from this piece of wood up to the top. You probably saw I went ahead and finished the um, trap doors on the end of the column. With this one, you just have two hinges and it's connected to the one uh, section right there that I talked about earlier from the bottom and I notched out this section right here of the plywood um, and then notched out in here as well so that way it's able to close all the way. I may have to put a um, little latch here to keep it closed 
uh, but that one works pretty well. Uh, and with this one, it uh, opens, open it. it opens down like that. And same thing with this trap door. I used a piece of um, one by four, and that fits in right in between these two braces right here. And the um, hinges are just attached on the outside, and I think I had to notch out the bottom a little bit as well in order to make it fit. Okay, so the columns aren't aligned right now, but I wanted to show you that I made this uh, section of plywood and attached it to this column. And it's the same size as the base, but the reason I did that is because I'm learning from my mistakes I made with this one. And this angled section right here, it's made out of foam, but whenever I would set it up on top of the base, it started to chip away and it would break off like right here. Um, but now it will be attached to this bottom piece and will hopefully not break. Another thing um, is to drill the holes through this part of the column and the base. And then when they're aligned, you'll put bolts in and be able to attach them. This is the top section of the column, at least the wooden part of it. Um, and what I did is I made a box out of one by fours that is the same size as the column so that it sits into that lip. Um, and then that's surrounded by another layer of 1x4s, um, and then the crown molding was cut to go around that. Uh, big piece of foam is eventually going to sit on top of that crown molding with some other details. Um, but it's honestly up to you on how you want to decorate your home. This is how I made the structure for the lantern to sit on. I started with an 18 inch 1x4 that just lays in the middle between each side. And then these are two vertical. Um, one by fours that are eight and a half inches in height, and then seven and a half inches for the top part. And then this is just a two by four that I cut to a square that lays in the middle, and then the lantern sits on top of that, and that's just bolted in with two brackets on either side that are screwed into the one by four. So these lanterns are pretty cheap, um, but they work. And that's all that matters. Hopefully they last. Uh, I'll put in the description where I found them. And then this is just a flame bulb you can get at Home Depot. The wires, they just come out through the bottom, drill a hole through the 1x4 and the 2x4, and then uh, I'll have a stripped extension cord that just goes up with this. I started with the foam for the top part of the column. This bottom piece is 2 inch thick foam, and it's 25 by 25 inches, and that allows it to overhang an inch on all the sides. These top two pieces, are um, the insulating foam sheets. They're half an inch thick. Um, and this bottom one is nine inches, and then this top one is seven inches. And it's just cut out for the two by four in the middle. And that just rests on top of that. Um, I glued some of this with the spray foam. I used liquid nails uh, for a lot of the foam. This down here, I glued it with spray foam. Um, but now it's time to make the angled pieces. Okay, so before I glue this last trapezoid angled piece in, I wanted to show you how I make them. Um, so first the measurements, this is seven inches at the top, this bottom is 18 and a half, and then it's eight and a half inches tall. And you may have to do a little bit of trig to figure it out, um, but once, once you know what angle you want, it's pretty easy to figure out. But I cut all the edges at 45 degree angles with the um, jigsaw over there um, and just glue it in with some spray foam and it works pretty well. I'll end up carving the spray foam out um, so it looks more like that and a little more clean. So these are the foam bricks that go around the column. These are nine inches tall and the first one starts five inches down from the top and each grout line is an inch wide. Uh, you can see I cut away so that some of the bricks look like they're falling off. I'll eventually fill this with um, spray foam. But all these are glued on with liquid nails. Um, and you can see the edges, I overlap them as well so that it will eventually look like one brick. In the back, I had to cut away and glue these on separately because you have the trap door here. And that way, it's still able to open. I started making the foam molding pieces for the column. This horizontal one up here, um, I used a router table in order to get that decorative edge. And I stopped right in the middle so that this piece of foam right here, this vertical piece, is flush up against that. 
Um, and you can see I sprayed the spray foam in all the grout lines. Um, and that will eventually be carved away so it looks more like this. Uh, but that way it looks like this block is inset into the column. And now you have two separate bricks instead of one long piece of foam. So very similar to how I did the angled pieces for the top part of the column, these just have different measurements. This top part is 18 and a half inches. This bottom is 24 and three quarters inches. And then the whole thing is six and a half inches tall. All the edges are cut at a 45 degree angle with the jigsaw. And then I'm just using spray foam and gluing it in to this section at the bottom. So I like to use pool noodles for some of the molding. These are basically acting as a roundish looking molding. And the way I do it is I cut these in half and then at each corner I cut it at a 45 degree angle so that they line up with each other. For these bottom ones, I had to notch out this area right here so that it fits in with this piece right here. And these are basically just covering up this gap down here. I'm just gluing them with um, spray foam and using toothpicks to keep them in place. I've also been aging the column quite a bit with a few tools. One of them is the wire brush, and this helps roughen up the bricks. And once I apply the hard coat, it creates a nice texture on that as well. Another one of them is the Dremel with a sander bit. And I basically go along all the edges of the bricks, and the molding, and it gives it a nice look all around. And then the last thing I use is a wood burner. And this helps create the cracks and whatever aging you want to basically burn into the foam. Um, so that works really well. So I started work on the molding for the base of the column. These top pieces are all three inches in width, but once you use the router table to create that decorative edge, it does make it a little smaller. Um, but this longer piece is 25 and 5 eighths inch and overlaps on the corner and then the smaller piece is 24 and 5 eighths inch. These bottom pieces have the same decorative edge you can get with the router. The measurements are a little different. The width here was originally 2 inches and as you can see the bigger piece which is 9 inches tall kind of overlaps with that and then you have these um, foam pieces that you glue on because you have that gap so you need to have something for it to glue onto. But the side piece is 26 inches. These ones up here are the same as those. And then the front piece is 27 inches. And then it just overlaps right there. Again, with these back trap doors, you do have to cut around the molding so that it's able to open. You can see I just cut around the top right there. And then with these bottom pieces, you just cut straight down. I started working on the hard coat for the column. I'm using flex bond, and you can either get the white or the gray. And I got the white. You basically just pour some into bucket, pour enough water so that you're able to spread it onto the column and mix it up. And then just use a paintbrush and apply it to the column. I also like, once I spread it on, I like blotting it and poking at it so that it gets a nice rocky texture. So yeah, I just have one more side to do. Another important thing to keep in mind when you're mixing and applying the hard coat is to only mix up a little bit at a time and basically just do one side for each batch and then washing out your brush. Uh, because the Flex Bond dries pretty quickly and it's easier to work with with smaller batches. So here's our gate so far. It's coming along nicely. As you can see, I went ahead and attached the hinges to the column, and they are just screwed into the wooden piece. And then for the actual gate, I drilled through the side so that we can bolt it in, and that way we can take it off and store it after Halloween. So for the measurements, this bottom 1x2 is 31 inches in length, and it attaches, can you hear the thunder? Spooky, send the mood. Anyways, this um, bottom piece attaches to these two by twos, and this taller one is seven feet tall, and then the shorter one is six feet tall. And then each PVC piece goes up by three inches 
first one starting at six, six three, six six, six nine, and then finally seven feet. So these middle one by twos are both 28 inches. The first one starts three feet from the bottom, and then the second one starts three inches from this one. That's because it fits this uh, three inch PVC piece that um, you basically cut into small circles. And this is going to fit in between each one of them. We have them, the rest of them over here. And they'll just be glued in, I may screw them in actually, uh, in between each one of these. And that adds a little decorative thing. But for all the holes in the wood, we just drilled it in with a one inch bit. And then for the bottom pieces, they're not fully drilled in. They just, the PVC just rests in that. Lastly, these plywood pieces at the top, they are somewhat decorative, but they are going to help stabilize the PVC up here um, and will attach with a bracket basically in the middle right there. And I just traced out a shape that I wanted, just cut it out with a jigsaw. Just to add a little bit of decoration. You can see I added the brackets to the plywood, it just bolted in right here and then screwed into the two by two. All these PVC, it's just screwed in in a couple different places. And I glued the bottom with hot glue and in the middle as well, and that should keep it in. So it turns out that these are actually, the space in here is three and a half inches, um, but the PVC is three inch PVC. And those are just screwed in from the top and I glued in the bottom as well. Another thing is that the hinges are placed so the gate only swings inward and it stops right there. But you can turn the hinges around if you want the gate to swing the other way. It's up to you. So this is how we create the finials for the gate. We just use black foam paper and cut out the shape you want. And then we're gluing both sides with hot glue and then leaving the bottom open so that just slips over the PVC and we'll glue all the finials on to the PVC. You can see the finials on top of the gates. They're almost finished. I still need to get some of these um, ball finials to go on top of each one of these two by twos and then that'll finish off the gate. So I went ahead and set up the gates the columns and I put our cemetery sign up here that we made a few years ago. It's made out of foam, just dremeled out the letters and cut out this backing foam piece and glued them on. And the PVC is just glued into the column and then we have the coupling right there so we can take the sign off when we're ready to store it. Alrighty, so I started applying a light gray base coat to some of the bricks and some other places on the column. I'm using a spray gun that's hooked up to the air compressor at 40 PSI. And it makes it really easy just to spray on, spray on some color and makes it really fast and easy. But for the molding sections and the other places that are white right now, um, I'm gonna mix a darker gray in apply that on probably with a paintbrush and also the grout lines. So I went ahead and hand painted the molding with a darker gray. This is just white, black, and a little bit of brown. And it definitely brings out the contrast between the bricks and the molding, but I am going to eventually age everything else with um, some watered down greens, browns, and blacks. It's starting to rain. So. <laughs> so I took the glass out of both of these lanterns and I laid it out here. And you can see this one I spray painted with white spray paint and then black spray paint at the top to kind of get that gradient. And that makes it opaque so you won't be able to see the light inside the lantern. But you can see I haven't done these ones yet. This is what it looks like with the opaque glass and the color gradient with the black at the top. You can also see I've also started painting the actual lantern itself. 
with a turquoise color. I'm just using a small paintbrush and blotching it on. And this is supposed to look like patina from copper. So making it look nice and old. So my decorative balls have come in from Capital City Lumber. These normally go on the ends of curtain rods. I believe that they are two and a half inches in diameter. But you can see that I've also started painting the gates with just black paint, simple as that. So now that both fences are painted black, I've started applying the rust. And the way I'm doing it is I've had this sawdust saved. Oh, I made a mess, or well, whatever. Um, and then I put it in a cup and mix it with black paint and just paint it on to any part of the fence that you want. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to go over with some brown to make it look like actual rust. And it's a nice technique because once the paint dries, it stays on there. So even more details. So I've started aging the column. I haven't done it down there yet. But the way I'm doing this is I'm using watered down black, about that consistency, and then a big old paintbrush. And I'm basically blotching it on, painting it on the bricks, and then wiping the majority of it off with a paper towel. That way it doesn't darken up the bricks too much, and it gives you a nice texture. All, all over the bricks. And because the paint is watered down, you can even let it drip or just paint on the, the drips on there. <laughs> and that makes it look nice and old. All right, next I added some brown. And this stuff goes a long way. It's a pretty strong color. I used a spray gun to add it. And I just put it in some different spots. But now it's time for some green. So now that I've added the green, the last step is taking a little bit of this beige color and getting it on the tips of your brush and then dry brushing it onto the brick so that you just hit the edges. Kind of see a little better over here. So you just hit the edges of that hard coat on the brick. And that really makes it pop, makes it look more like stone. So yeah, that's the last step. And once you're finished, you've got that part of the column done. So I did the same painting method for the top part of the column. And I think it turned out pretty well. But yeah, that's pretty much a finished column. So I've got both of the finished columns set up with the gates in between them, cemetery side, and both the lanterns are on. I think they turned out pretty well. And now it's time to make the side walls and the end columns on both sides. Alrighty guys, so that's going to do it for part one on how to build cemetery columns and entrance. I hope you guys enjoyed this pretty long video. If you have any questions about the building process, materials used, or anything else, go ahead and ask them down in the comments below. I'll do my best in answering them. We have a lot of posted videos of the rest of our haunt and the props we've made, along with some other builds on our Facebook. So consider following us at Haunt for HEP. We raise money for the Homeless Empowerment Program, and we would love your guys' help with that. Come back for part two. We'll be working on the sidewalls and end columns. We also have some other how-to videos on this YouTube channel, so consider checking those out. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Happy Halloween and happy haunting.